in 2007. Um, in 2005, I also wanted to start my own magazine because I was sick of reading all about celebrities and who had cellulite and who was sleeping with who and this, that, and the other. And I just thought, you know what, instead of complaining about things, why don't you just create your own stuff? Like I said, I had no experience, no degree, didn't know what publishing was, what pagination was, or anything at the time. But I was like, hey, I can do this. So um, I went to Unlimited, which supports social entrepreneurs. I was like, hey, this is a different idea that I had. And they were like, hey, we'll give you some money. And within five weeks, we got £3,000. And she spent on, I can't remember, but wasn't actually getting the magazine <laughs> produced. And um, we did little bits and pieces, we did some research. At the time, we were more for, um, aiming for an underground street urban magazine, all about the music industry and things that were happening. It was a bit gritty. But after spending 12 months of research, I realised that the market was already oversaturated with that type of publication. And I thought that's not going to make anything different about what we want to do. So I kind of put the magazine on pause. And in 2007, I started the course, the MA, um, right here. Um, and it kind of started to make me, me think a bit more about, okay, well, your unique selling point, what's different about you, because there's millions of magazines out there. And obviously, we don't have millions of pounds. So what I decided to do is spend literally three years researching, because the fact that I didn't have a degree in magazine production or magazine journalism, the fact that I had no work experience, and I never actually did any work experience with any other publication, <coughs> um, and the fact that I always was quite thorough, I like to research, I like to read a lot. Um, as the other two speakers have said, online is very, very important, but I don't think anything um, could be a good old book. And one thing that I enjoyed about doing the course was that even though we had a very extensive reading list, I quite enjoyed reading a lot of other books and um, because it actually enriched my experience and gave me a lot of um, more knowledge. What I also did as well, which I've come to a bit further, was a lot of more networking and just getting out there, talking to people, going to events, attending short courses and things like that. Um, and True Life magazine is actually what we're, we're running now. Um, and also Birmingham Media Group replaces Inner City Creative Media Group um, and that's what we've we launched this summer. Um, I'll just talk about obviously my team and how we bring our concepts to reality um, by looking at vision, how you vision, you develop your research and your roots to market. When I started off I was very much a one man band, so as a social entrepreneur when you don't have any money you learn a lot of skills because you have to literally do everything. Um, when I did True Life magazine I bought Mr Site which is like £35 and learned how to build my own website. Obviously I utilise free um, networks like Facebook and stuff like that. But now I realise the importance of having a team. When I went back to university, I studied management and learned all about developing team roles. And I realised that I was much, a very much a resource investigator and a bit of a plan. And I wasn't really much of a finisher. And that's one of the reasons I didn't finish the course. Um, but it's one of the things I learned that having a team is extremely important. With myself, I wouldn't say I'm a specialist within any specific field except for being an enterprise consultant, which I do as a day job. And that's what kind of pays the bills now. I go into businesses and help them. Um, but basically, I'm basically a jack of all trades and a master of none. Um, and when I um, met my uh, mentor, one thing he said to me, just just focus on one thing. I'd already did the business startup course, and I was like, why are you telling me this? Because I can't focus on one thing. But then I thought it's important to do that, so I focused on True Life magazine. And doing the course and the modules, I thought, hey, I've got a real life project that I can actually apply. And that's how I found some of the, the assignments really, really easy. Um, the first thing, obviously, the vision came from myself. And it wasn't the case of, hey, I want to meet all these celebs. It was a case of, well, there's loads of talented people in, in the UK, especially Birmingham. And even though we're at Urban Magazine, it's multicultural. And we never get any opportunities to showcase what we've got. It's always about London or up north. And also, well, if you're not a celebrity, you're not famous, it's not gossip, um, then you won't get into a magazine. So what I wanted to do is create a magazine which was basically just for creative talent, and people that they didn't know. So you pick it up, see the front cover and goes, who the heck is she? Like, why is she on the front cover? That will inspire you to open it and read it. Um, and that was the vision that I had. And then I met with my business partner, who was a photographer. We were on a train going to two different conferences. I was like, you're from Birmingham? He was like, yeah, I'm from Birmingham. He's like, he's a photographer, he wants to start a magazine. I was like, hey, I want to do a magazine. And that's basically how it happened. And we started planning it on the train, we parted company, and we came back together a few weeks later. So I was originally the person that birthed the vision, but I had to then build a team of people. Um, I actually work a lot with students and a lot from this university and I must say that's been quite key to my success because I, can, I always thought, okay, what can I get for free without exploiting anybody? Um, what can I get for free? But also, I'm very much up for mutual beneficial partnerships where we can exchange goods and services where money might not be exchanged 
but we can just exchange and that way it saves a lot of money and also helps you to grow and develop your business. So I had the vision and then the, the next stage was developing it. So it meant business planning, um, attending the, the, the masters, and um, researching, a lot of the stuff I did was online. Um, I probably went to the library a few times because I wanted to use the keynote um, and market reviews and then I went to the count and it was like five pounds to copy, to copy. So I just sat there copying it all out basically. And I just basically looked for any way of getting things for free. And I did a lot of research and the research that I did, I used things like Survey Monkey, which actually I found out through these calls and it's like a free online, you know, survey tool that you can use. And then you survey monkey and we ended up doing like market research with 750 young women and to find out the things that they want to see in the magazine. Um, and one of the things we also did as well is we did um, focus groups because I also come from a bit of a research <coughs> background. So I obviously wanted to utilise some of the social research methodology within my enterprise. And then obviously we, we did a, a product, a um, sample product, um, which was this magazine here, um, True Life magazine, um, pre-launch sample edition which is about 40 pages long, a few articles and a bit of information about what the magazine was going to be about, who our readers were and things like that. And then I just distributed it free of charge around Birmingham. We produced about 2,500 copies. Um, and then the, re the response was absolutely amazing, which then inspired us to go on and do our first edition. Um, unfortunately, um, I was focusing too much on the social aspect rather than the enterprise aspect, which sometimes you have a habit of doing in social enterprise which meant that we never made any money. I found myself in 30 grand of personal debt. Um, I had two offices, which I ended up having to give up both of <coughs> them and going back um, and working from home, which I actually think was the best thing for me because it helped me to focus. I had this big office, I had my own PA, I had my designer. So it's like, yes, I have a cup of tea, please. And it was all fantastic. But then I had to actually focus back on what was it, the purpose I started. And if we weren't doing anything entrepreneurial or making any money, then we weren't ever going to be survive. We weren't going to survive, and we weren't going to leave a legacy for other young people coming up. And um, at the moment, our routes to market are very, very varied. And um, I must say, because I like to get things for free, and um, since 2005, I've never printed a flyer. I do everything online, and um, I do definitely believe in the importance of face to face. But I spend all my time, 90% of business online, and the last 10% of signing the papers all. Um, you know, signing contracts and things like that, that 10% is a face-to-face. -face. We do have to obviously do face-to-face -face networking as well. But my main routes to market have been Facebook, has been absolutely brilliant. Um, I don't really have much friends. Well, I consider everybody to be my friend, but I don't really go on Facebook to socialise or to talk about where I went last night. I kind of just use it basically for networking <coughs> and to promote my business. I've got about five groups on Facebook. I've got um, um, business pages and I've got my personal profile and what I used to just do is go around and just add loads of people and just be like hi oh, hey don't, if you don't mind a friendly ad I want to network with creative professionals just like you so it was like hey she thinks I'm creative and would <laughs> accept me so I've got about three and a half thousand friends now on Facebook which is really brilliant because each time I put a status up like we're doing this we're doing that we get loads and loads of comments and things and a lot of people they contact us and then email us and then we have meetings and we do business that way as well